Hello, and welcome to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1650, lowest common ancestor of a binary tree 3. Let's read the question prompt. Given two nodes of a binary tree P and Q, return their lowest common ancestor. According to the definition of an LCA on Wikipedia, the lowest common ancestor of two nodes P and Q in a tree T is the lowest node that has both P and Q as descendants, where we will allow a node to be a descendant of itself. And we can see that we're given a node here as a data structure that has a value, it has a left and a right, which are both nodes, and it has a parent, which is also a node. So we should keep this in mind when we solve our problem. Now, let's look at an example. Okay, so we've read the question prompt and we've understood what a lowest common ancestor in a binary tree is. Now, let's look at our example and try to see how we might solve this problem. So if we're given that P equals four, so this node here, and Q equals eight, this node here, what would be the lowest common ancestor? Well, we see that the, the node where both of these converge at is going to be three, why? So we go here and then we go here, so we hit the root, and then this one will go up to the five and then the three. So this is the first node when traversing up for, into the parents that we meet, right, from both sides. And obviously eight can't go any higher because, um, you know, it would just, there is no parent of the root. So this would have to be our node here. So this gives us the idea that perhaps we want to go up the tree and then find the first point where we have already visited from the other side. So in this case, you know, this one is actually a shorter side of the tree, so we'll actually reach the three first. So one approach to solving this problem could be the set approach, where we will start at, you know, P, and we're going to traverse P all the way to the root. And we're going to keep track of all the nodes that we see along the way. So for example, we would see the node four, we would see the node two, we would see the node five, and eventually we would hit the root, and that's when our iteration is done because obviously the root doesn't have a parent. So this is what we've seen so far. Cool, so now we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna go from the eight. So now the eight's gonna go, it's gonna kick off, so it's gonna see the value eight, it's gonna then see the value one, and then we're gonna reach three, but we've already seen three before, so this will be our lowest common ancestor, because this is, you know, this is a node that we've already seen, and this is the first node that we see uh, that's in both trees when traversing through the parent. So that's one way to do it. And certainly this is, you know, possible in your, in your interview, you can definitely solve it this way, but your interviewer is probably gonna push you to solve it in a way that doesn't require extra space. Of course, this approach is gonna require, you know, um, you know, this is gonna be a two, a big O of two N um, time complexity algorithm because we have to traverse all the way through the parent of the first node and then potentially all the way up through the parent to the second node. Um, in the case that the root is actually the LCA. And then for space, so this is the time complexity, and then space-wise, we're going to need to potentially store you know, all these values. So this is also gonna be a big O of N solution. So this is actually just gonna be big O of N asymptotically. So we can actually solve this um, without any extra space. And I'm going to say now that the solution requiring no extra space you're probably not going to come up with it on your own unless you've seen it before. It is quite, you know, one of those kind of aha trick uh, solutions that, you know, if you haven't seen it before or if you don't have like a genius level IQ, you're probably not going to derive it yourself. But once you've seen it, it's so simple. It just like it'll blow your mind. And let's go over that solution now. OK, so we've seen what the naive solution to this problem is, but I did tell you that there is an optimization where we can actually remove any sort of space um, allocations and do this in constant space. How are we going to do that? Well, I just want to preface that this solution is one of those trick solutions that if you've seen it before, it's super obvious how it works and it will just click. If you haven't seen it before, then the first time you see it, it'll click, you'll realize what it is, you'll have your mind blown, 
but the chances of you actually deriving it on your own are quite slim unless you have some like genius level IQ in which case you know you probably wouldn't even be watching this video because you'd already be working at Google um, anyway what we're gonna do here is quite strange and let's try to follow the logic um, and hopefully it's gonna make sense if not we'll write it out uh, and then kind of derive it as we go so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create two new variables the first variable is gonna be called p copy which is going to be set to p in the beginning so we're going to define it to be p and q copy is going to equal to q so if we draw this out this in the beginning p copy will be 4 and q copy will be 8 and what we want to do is if the two nodes p copy and q copy they don't equal each other so if they're not the same node then what we want to do is go into the parent um, if it exists so what we want to do here is we're going to start at 4 and 8, right? So we're going to see, okay, is 4 equal to 8? No, it's not. So we're going to go into its parents. So that means we go up the tree. So now P copy is going to be equal to 2, and Q copy is going to be equal to 1. Okay. Does 2 equal 1? No, it doesn't. Okay. So let's go into the parent of each one. So now P copy is going to go to the 5, and Q copy is going to go to the 3. Cool. Does 5 equal 3? No, it doesn't. Okay. That means that we have to keep going into the parent. So P copy is going to go into the parent, so it's going to be 3. And Q copy's parent is actually none because it's the root. So this is going to be equal to, I guess, null, right? It doesn't have a parent. So <clears throat> we're going to say, okay, does 3 equal to null no it doesn't so we need to go into the parent so 3 will go into its parent which is null right and we're gonna be at null for here and obviously we can't go to the parent of a null node because you know it doesn't have a parent so what we do in this case and this is where the trick of the problem is is we need to reset our Q copy and when I say reset you may think oh we're gonna set it back to 8 actually what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reset it to P and you're gonna see in a second why we do that so we're gonna reset it to 4 and we're gonna continue with our iteration because we're going until P copy um, equals to Q copy right so okay does null equal 4 no it doesn't so we need to go into the parents and because null does not have any parents we need to reset P but again, like we did with Q, we're not going to reset it back to P. No, no, no. We're going to reset it back to Q. So now we're going to be at this 8. And remember, we need to go into the parent of the 4. So now we're going to be at this 2 here. Okay. So now we're at 2 and 8. Does 2 equal 8? No, it doesn't. So we need to go into the parents, right? So that means that P copy is going to be 8. So its parent is going to be 1. And then... Q copy is going to be this 2 and its parent is going to be 5. Now, does 1 equal 5? No, it doesn't. So we need to go into the parents again for both nodes. So the parent of P copy, which is the 1 here, is going to be 3. So we go to the 3 here and here's where the magic happens. Q copy's parent is also 3. So now we've hit the point where they're actually equal. So we know that we found the least common ancestor, which is this 3. So, why does this work? Let's think about this. Well, the reason that this works is because when we iterate through the tree, one will reach the parent faster, right? There'll be some gap between the nodes in terms of like how many steps it takes to get to the parent. In this case, for the four, it takes one, two, three, whereas the eight will get there in one, two. So the difference between them 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. And why is this significant? Well, if we know that 1 got there faster by 1, well then if we reset the value, right? So if P got here in 3, but Q got here in 2, and that means Q will be 1 ahead. So instead of setting it back to Q, we set it back to P, which means that now it'll take 3 times, and then the, the, Q, the P will catch up, 
it will get reset to the, the original queue. And now the distance between them, the gap will have been bridged so that now they have uh, an equal time to reach the node, the, the LCA. And apologies if that's a little bit of a rough explanation. It does take some time to wrap your head around it, but let's think about it and kind of like draw it out again. So we know that we start from four and eight, right? So it's going to, you know, it's going to be one iteration to get here, one iteration to get here. On the next iteration, we go to the five. On the next iteration, we go to the three. Now, remember, we go up again. So this, you know, goes to its parent and this goes to the three, which is like null here. So now we reset this down here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is this is now going to go to, you know, null here. And what we do on the next iteration is we then go up here for the this is now Q and now P will get set to this thing and we can see look now there's a gap of two and they're going to reach at the same time. So it's going to take one two to reach the three and then Q it's going to take one two. So that's how we've like equalized that you know three minus two equals one gap um, by resetting it to the other node. Again it takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around this. And it, you know, once it hits you and it clicks, that's it. You get it. It's a very strange solution. We'll code up both the naive solution and this one. Um, probably, if you don't understand the solution, better to just go with the naive one, and then you can maybe like cheese your way through the, um, you know, the optimal solution. Hope your interviewer doesn't really ex ask you to explain too much. Um, but you can kind of walk through this, and hopefully, this has made sense. So let's go to the editor and actually code this up. We're in the editor. Let's code up both solutions. And we're going to start with the naive solution. So like we said, we're going to maintain a set to keep track of the nodes that we've seen. So let's define that. So we're going to say scene equals set. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up through P, get all the nodes that we see. And then we're going to go up through Q. And the first time we see a node that is already in our scene set, we're done. So we can simply return that node. So we're going to say while P, we're going to say what scene dot ah, scene dot add p and we're going to say p equals p dot parent cool now what we can do is we can go up through q so we're going to say while q and we're going to say if q in scene return q else we're going to say scene dot add actually we don't need to do that uh, at this point, we know that we're going to find the LCA. Um, we're just going to say Q equals Q dot parent. And then what we're going to do at the end, actually, that's it. We don't have to worry about the the, uh, the node not being in there because we are told that um, they both exist in the tree. So we will find an LCA. Um, so that's really all we have to do. So let's submit this, make sure it works. And cool, it does work. So like we said, this solution is going to be a you know big O of n in the time and then big O of whoops uh, space wise it's going to be also big O of n. Now let's code up the solution for the you know little trick that I told you about and it's actually super simple. So let's reset our editor here and remember what we said we're going to make a copy of p and we're going to set it equal to p and we're going to make a copy of Q and we're going to set it equal to Q. So what we need to do is remember while P copy does not equal to Q copy, we're going to say that uh, Q copy is going to equal to its parent if you know Q copy exists. So basically, as long as we haven't hit the root and gone to its parent, because that, in that case, it's null and null nodes obviously don't have parents, we'll get some sort of like access error here. Uh, otherwise, in that case where it is null, we need to reset it, but not back to Q, we need to set it to P. So we're going to say P, and we're going to do the same thing for P. We're going to say P copy equals P copy dot parent if P copy else Q. And at that point, this while loop will break when they're equal, which is going to be the LCA as we saw from the drawing. And all we need to do is either return P copy or Q copy. It doesn't matter because at this point they'll be the same. And that is it. So let's submit that, make sure it works, and we can see that it does. So we did not improve anything on the time here. It's still going to be a big O of n algorithm. But 
on the space, since we're not actually um, defining any sort of data structure to keep track of where we've been, we just have these two pointers. It's going to be a constant space solution. So this is the most optimal solution. And obviously, you know, it is a trick solution because I think that personally, if you've never seen the solution before, you know, whether you read the leak code comments or, you know, you saw the worked out diagram or you watched someone else's video, you're probably not going to know this or figure it out on your own. It is one of those like, oh, duh, like it makes sense once you've seen it. And it's so simple why it works. But if you haven't seen it, like it's just ridiculous, uh, although it is quite easy to explain. So hopefully, you know, this video did a good job of explaining to you how it works. You know, you can kind of watch the diagram. Hopefully it didn't get too messy because there is a lot of things going on. But just rewatch the explanation portion if you didn't understand how I actually derived uh, this solution and why it works. And then, you know, maybe just try it out with your own tree and see how it works uh, and then realize that they will eventually converge after, you know, uh, two iterations through the tree. They'll eventually hit um, the point uh, that finds the LCA. And at that point, you're actually done. So. We've solved this question in two ways, one being kind of the naive solution, one being this like strange, obscure trick solution, but it is the most optimal solution. So you should probably know it for your interviewer. Um, you know, you're going to probably get hit with this as a follow up. If you solve it the naive way, your interviewer is going to say, OK, can you do it without extra space? So you're definitely going to want to know the solution. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and good luck with your leak coding. Bye.